Hello everyone, I'm Jason, and in this video, I wanna show you how I seasoned my wok. Uh, the reason why you wanna season a wok is it does two main things. When you have a seasoned wok, it first protects it from rust, and number two, it creates a non-stick finish. So here I have two woks. They're both carbon steel woks. I got them both from Williams Sonoma. Only difference is that this one is straight out of the box. This is how it comes um, when you buy it. And this one is after I seasoned it completely. It has a very dark finish. And to me, it looks, in my opinion, it looks beautiful. These are the three steps that I use to season my wok. The first one is to clean the wok. The second one is to blue the steel. And the third step is to apply oil and heat. Because this handle is uh, not protected with any type of coating, I don't really want it to be touching any hot water and I don't want it in the oven. Because um, what it could do is it could, uh, it could expand, it could shrink. And then afterwards it might not fit the bolts very well. It might be a little bit loose when I use it. So I'm gonna go ahead and take these screws out and take out the piece of wood. Or try to pull it out, it's kind of tight. Did you dent it? Yeah. You told it up. Oh, sorry. Yeah, so now that I took off the handle, I'm going to uh, rinse the, the wok with hot water to try to get some of the grease off that's uh, put on from the shipment. And then from there, once I rinse it off, I'm gonna scrub it with some hot soapy water. And uh, I'm gonna use the soft side of the sponge just because I tried scrubbing it on the back earlier with a scouring pad and it, it scratched the metal. So I'm just gonna use the soft side, but I'm gonna probably do this for maybe 15 minutes, uh, 20 minutes if I have to, but I wanna get as much of the grease as I can off before it goes into the oven or goes on the stove. So I think I got most of the oil off. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna heat it up on the stove, dry it off of course. And I'm gonna heat up here. Bluing the wok is best done on a gas stove. Unfortunately, with induction or electric stoves, it can be very difficult to heat all surfaces of the wok and reach the high temperatures that we need for this step. If you don't have a gas stove, you can use a portable butane gas burner. When the steel is heated to a very high temperature, the surface will oxidize, but instead of a red oxide or a rust, the wok will develop a black oxide or black rust. You'll see the surface will turn brown to dark blue to light blue. This is the steel reacting with the, the oxygen in the air, and this process is called bluing. This step is important because the black oxide on the wok is forming a barrier over the steel and this barrier will do two things. The first thing is this will give some extra resistance to rust compared to a non-blue steel. And the second thing is that the black oxide will have a strong affinity to oils, which will basically allow your seasoning to bond more easily and stick onto the metal longer. It'll be harder for it to be removed. Think of this step kind of like putting on a coat of primer before painting. You want to have that primer so that when you paint it, it will be able to stick and hold. And uh, another example would be using facial toner before you apply serums or moisturizers. The toner will help your skin absorb what you apply afterwards. So it's kind of like those two things. So what I did was uh, to have the heat a little bit more concentrated, 
a normal range at home, sometimes it's not hot enough to blue the steel. So what I did was I took off the lid of the burner, and so now all the heat is concentrated. Be sure to turn the wok over the flame until the entire wok is blued. I was able to get the handle part blued as well since I took off the wooden handle earlier. And it helps to use pliers or gloves for protection just to make sure you don't get burned by the hot metal or the flames. Bluing the entire wok took me about 25 minutes. And once I finished bluing the steel, I shut off the heat and you want to let the wok cool down. You don't want to put any uh, oil into it while it's piping hot unless you want to burn off some eyebrows. So now you can see that the wok is completely blue. For the last step, you'll need to apply thin coats of oil or fat and some type of heat source. There isn't much of a consensus on what oil is best for seasoning your wok. Some people like to use high smoke point oils like peanut, grapeseed, or canola oil. And some other people say that using pork lard is best because that's how it's traditionally done. In my opinion, the type of oil you should use just really depends on the type of heating method that you use. With my first wok, I used canola oil and I seasoned it on the stove. I was able to get my seasoning brown, but not black. I also wasn't able to get the seasoning all the way to the edges of the wok, especially where the wooden helper handle is and the handle itself. There's nothing wrong with it. It is non-stick and maybe with an extended period of time and high enough heat, the seasoning will eventually turn black. If you want the black finish but still plan to use high smoke point oils, what I recommend is to season it outside on a propane burner or hot coals to get the temperature hot enough and high enough for the oil to fully pulverize. For myself, I'll be using the oven uh, to season the wok and from this oven it goes up to 550 degrees so using a high smoke point oil might be counterproductive because it won't reach the high temperatures that we need for it to become black. So for this wok I'll be using cold pressed organic flaxseed oil. It has a very low smoke point of 225 degrees and it's great for initial seasonings it will create a very hard and uh, very slick non-stick surface. Black seed oil is a medicinal oil, so it's not a cooking oil, so you probably will have to find it at a health food store. This bottle set me back $25 for 24 fluid ounces, so just be warned, it's not cheap. I only needed a few ounces to season this wok, so I'll be using the rest to season other pans. All right, on to the seasoning process. I place the wok in the oven at 200 degrees and let it bake for about 15 minutes. By heating up the wok, this will open up tiny pores on the metal surface and allow the seasoning to fill it in. Once the metal has come to temperature, I'll then take the wok out of the oven and put about a teaspoon of flaxseed oil in it. I'll use a clean paper towel to spread the flaxseed oil on the entire surface of the wok, top and bottom. I want the entire thing to be seasoned and protected from rust. Now that the entire wok is covered in flaxseed oil, you actually want to wipe off as much of the oil as you can with another clean paper towel. If there's too much oil when it goes in the oven, there will be streaks and possibly baked on drips, making the surface uneven. And my goal is to get as thin of a coat as possible, so the wok should not have an oily shine. It should have more of a matte shine when you are done wiping it. I then put the wok back in the oven and now bump the temperature to 300 degrees. I have some foil under the wok just in case there's any drips, but if the coat is very thin, you probably won't have any. After about 15 minutes or so, I take the wok out once again, and I wipe it one more time with a clean paper towel. I've noticed that when you bake the wok in the oven, the oil, even though it's very thin, it'll tend to beat up on the surface as it's going up in temperature, and this can sometimes leave some tiny dark spots or bumps in your seasoning. So I take this extra step to 
wipe off any of those little small tiny beads of oil. And I, I've noticed that my, my clean paper towel does get some more oil off. And then once I'm done, I'll put the wok back in the oven and turn up the temperature as high as my oven can go, which is 550 degrees Fahrenheit. Once the oven comes to temperature, I set a timer for one hour. And after an hour, I turn off the oven. With the oven door still closed, I let the wok cool down completely. This will take probably at least an hour. So this is the wok after one coat of seasoning. The wok came out very dark and glossy with blue hues. The surface felt very smooth and I probably could have started cooking with it right away, but I recommend adding a few more coats. After each coat, the seasoning will continue to build up and the wok will get darker and darker. Do not try to speed up the process by using thicker coats of oil or baking it for less time. I was in no rush and this took me about two days to finish six coats. So this is what the wok looks like after six coats. It's completely smooth to the touch. There's no greasiness, there's no streaks of oil, uh, no sticky residue on it. It's completely smooth. You know, one last thing I would do before cooking any type of food in it is I would blacken some chives or some green onions or ginger just to really finish off this seasoning so that you can start cooking your favorite Asian dishes. Um, just so you know, as you continue using the wok, as you make more food in it, more cook more, it'll continue to build the seasoning and build that nonstick slick finish. If you found this video helpful, please like and leave a comment below. I'm excited to use this wok. So if you want to see more videos, please subscribe.